little magnets here. Uh, a lot of guys are not going to be really interested in the magnets, but there's a couple guys that did want to see it. Some of the new guys. This guy's basically will walk you over a basic, how we do a basic magnets, and how some of the things I think should be done that a lot of times don't get done. First thing is, always make sure your disconnect's pulled. And you know, obviously we're gonna check the microfarads on the capacitor and we're gonna pop the little, uh, this little cover door off the contactor to make sure it's not pitted. We'll check ohms across the contactor coil. But here's a lot of things that guys don't do that can cause an issue. This is a heat pump and it's a carrier product. If, if, if you have all these plugs, just, you know, make sure they're, they're secure. All these wires, make sure, make sure they're secure. You got your, where your relay breaks the fan for defrost, make sure those wires are secure. You know, same thing here on the contactor. You know, make sure they're not loose and just popping off. Make sure they're secure. Another thing to check for is if you have wire nut connections, which most of the time you do. Just give them a twist. Make sure they're not loose. And none of these are. Because a lot of times these can be loose and one of the wires wants to pull out. So you just, just give them a twist. It doesn't take long. And that's it. All, they're all tight. Now, on the capacitor, they're tight. But we're going to pull them off anyway so we can check the capacitor. All right, guys, for video purposes, I use the alligator clip here on the common wire, on the common part of the capacitor. It's a 40 slash five. Now these subco capacitors, I'm not a fan of. They're Chinese and they do not last long. And also, all of them have four pins. The common, this is fanned, and the hermatic. Now you can identify the hermatic because the hermatic has See how this one has the black ring around the bottom? And this one does too. Well, the Hermatic has a white ring on the bottom. So that's how you can identify Hermatic. But they should have did something like that on Common and Fan because if these things are rusted out and you know you don't know how to, you know, if you're not experienced and you don't know how to, you know, follow your wires and all that and or read a wiring diagram you would never know which one of these is common or fan but we do i do know because i left my common wire hooked up so this is common and you know you can also look down here and see that this is fan and then there's a c over here but sometimes that's rusted out and you can't see it so be careful with that on these subcos uh, i think there's a couple other brands that are like that as well all right so we're looking for 40 plus five between common and fan we should have five we have 5.0, so that's good. Now we're gonna go to her Hermatic, we should have 40. Now these are plus or minus 5%. We have four, hold on, let me get a better connection. I think I was touching the fan. Okay, we have 38.93, that's fine. So the capacitor checks out. Okay, next we'll move on to the contactor. Now this is a Homer contactor. Very popular with carrier and ICP products of, of today. Uh, I've also noticed on some of the newer train equipment that has that they have the Homer contactor. Now they don't have screws like a universal contactor to take this cover off. They have these little holes right here. Right there. And down here. And then same thing on the other side. I use my meter lead and I just push and then push here.
the same thing on the other side. This one here is wanting to fight me, this bottom one. Okay, but I was able to get it. I may have actually, yeah, I, I broke that, but it's okay, it'll still work. And you can look in here and you can see the contactor looks good. It's not pitted at all, it's in good shape. And then you just take your contactor cover for the homer and just push it back into place like so. Very simple. All right, so now we will pull the wires off of the contactor coil. They're definitely on there good and tight. Now, if you can't get them off by hand, Take you a pair of needle nose, grab it like so, just give it a good pull and it'll come right off. Okay, we'll set the meter to ohms and I like to see between, between, between 10 and 20 ohms across the contactor coil. Let me put my alligator clamp back on here because this is going to be this is hard to do with one hand. Okay. So we'll put this here. One there and one over here. And we have 14. It's kind of, yeah, that's, y'all should be able to see that. So I'm happy with that. That looks good. And then we will simply Hook the wires back up. That's it. And uh, you're really only going to see this on carrier ICP products, but there's a piston in here for your uh, heat pump metering device. So what I'll do is take a crescent wrench and just, you know, give it a snug. Make sure it's not loose. Uh... Alright. And it's not. It's not loose at all. But, you know, nothing wrong with checking that. And, you know, everything looks good. We went over all this already, but, you know, I'm OCD, so I'll check it again. Never hurts just to pass your hands over everything again. All right, well, guys, I mean, you know, that's pretty much it for the outdoor unit. Now, what I'm gonna do, the next thing I'll do is wash it, but I mean, I'm not gonna show you guys that. I mean, that's that's nothing to that. I mean, this these coils are not even dirty. So I'll just, you know, rinse them off with water. And, uh, you know, but before I do that, I'll fire the system up and I'll check refrigerant, which is, you know, very standard. And uh, we'll get some video when we go to the indoor unit. All right, guys, we're up in the attic at the air handler here. <clears throat> we clean our drains out with this stuff right here. It works really well. As you can see right there, it has to be activated by hot water only. But, it, I mean, it does a great job. I, I put to you like this. I don't go on many clogged drains because we, we put this stuff in the drain every six months. All right, so we got a carrier system, as you know, which is a uh, top tech is carrier stuff. Tech Pure, this is one of their media cleaners. It's a, it looks like a four inch media filter instead of a five. 
So I take that out and I give it an inspection and it's clean as a whistle. Great, it gives us this access to take a look at the coil. Coil looks good, nice and clean. It's got some rust on it, which is not. Uh, abnormal very nice duck system all hard pipe insulated on the outside trunk duck with zones three zones there's the zone panel over there I'm gonna put our media filter back in I really like these media filters. Not not this brand in particular, which I mean, it seems to be nice. I'm just talking about in general media filters. I really like them. When I was still working for myself, I was installing them. I had started installing them on all my change outs. All right, they put a ball valve on this drain for some reason. Is variable speed blower so there's no capacitor to check but I will open it up and get a visual inspection of everything we always just you know look around make sure the duct work and stuff is intact nothing's leaking everything looks good the drain's not clogged we cleared it out made sure the evaporator wasn't dirty but you know guys maintenance is it, it's kind of the same thing over and over that's why I don't really film them every day because it's the same thing over and over. But the weather is warming up. So we'll get you some no cool calls here before too long. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all on the next one.